It's crazy how much goes in into a shot. When, when I first got that machine, I went to like a, some roaster in Burlington and it was like two weeks of just, like I would take a sip and I was like, oh, <laughs> dump it, Sorry, make another you know. one. And I finally went in, I was like, guys, what am I doing wrong? And he was like, all right, take me through your process. You know, what, what do your grinds look like? How much are you dosing? How much are you pulling? And I was like, what are you talking? I was like, I'm dosing like 18 grams or I think I told him, no, I was dosing 16 grams. He's like, try doing 17. I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks a lot, buddy. That's right. And then I go home, put in one extra gram of coffee, which is like that much. And then like boom, it was a great shot of coffee. I was like, holy shit. Like that little difference makes a that much of a, difference. yeah, a huge yeah. difference in the end. So it's frustrating sometimes, but amazing others. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at these, they're so cute. Street taco size. I saw that it had obviously like, you know, large, medium, small, but these are so cute. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Look at them. They're like the perfect little size. That is a Sammy size taco. So Adi is the one that told me about Instacart and it has changed my life. I love getting my groceries delivered. It's amazing. It has, I, I'm like, clearly, not sponsored, um, but I'm, I tell everyone, like my brothers and sisters, my mom, my dad, I'm like, you guys, why are you going to the grocery store anymore? It's like, just order your groceries. It has saved me so much money because you don't do that whole like, oh, I could totally use some bananas. I could totally use some, you know, of this. And you're not, gra you just, you have a list and you just pull it off the app. It's incredible. It's awesome too for traveling. Like that's been the the biggest help. Um, if I try my hardest whenever we're on the road to get, you know, an Airbnb wherever we can or have somewhere with the kitchen just because it's a comfort, you know, when you're eating your, your own cooked food uh, versus having to eat out all the time, especially if we're anywhere for, you know, four or five days. Um, and it's awesome. The other day we were in Salt Lake City, I think was the last trip. And, you know, it's like a new city. We didn't have a car and I, you know, we showed up, I knew that we were gonna get to the Airbnb around eight o'clock at night. And it was like, oh, groceries will be here in an hour. It was just so perfect. It was a, before we even left the airport, I had groceries delivered or I had groceries ordered to be delivered. And it was just like, now the next morning we just got up and made breakfast and like kept going like nothing was, nothing had changed. It was nice. I, I mean, I've always really enjoyed cooking and kind of used it as, um, a way to relax at the end of the workday. So I was working a nine to five job. I was coaching at a couple gyms um, at the time. And I would get home and I think I'd maybe have, you know, an hour from getting home to then needing to go to bed because I would get up at 3.45 in the morning the next day and start the whole day over again. And rather than just getting home and sitting on the couch and turning the TV on and zoning out, I started cooking as just a way to, you know, like relax and decompress. And, you know, obviously it was helping me either prepare dinner that night or prepare um, my lunch for the next day or breakfast or whatever it was, um, you know, you need to eat. So it was something that was kind of checking that box of something I needed to do, but it was also something that I looked forward to and enjoyed and had started following a ton of food bloggers and reading a bunch of cookbooks and, um, when I left that job and started living with Matt, I remember asking him, you know, oh, what do you want for dinner tonight? And he said, oh, can you make that chili you made? And I was like, okay, I made a chili at some point and now he wants it. So I was like, all right, great. I gotta remember what it is that I made that he now wants. And that kind of um, started for me of like, well, I don't know what I did last time because the way that I've been cooking is kind of a little bit of this, a little bit of that whatever you have accessible to you. And so I started writing down the recipes that I was making. I started, you know, keeping track of the ingredients that I used. And, you know, even if it wasn't super specific of, you know, a teaspoon of this, a tablespoon of that, it was at least, okay, this chili had 
poblano peppers in it. Maybe a little different than just a red pepper or a green bell pepper it added some flavor. So I wanted to write down that that's what I did. Um, and so I just started doing that. And then on my own personal page, I just found that I was posting a lot about food and sharing recipes or sharing, not even recipes at that point, actually. It was just pictures of the stuff that I had created. Um, so a buddy of mine was like, oh, you should totally do like a, a page on this. And um, that was even before Feeding the Frasers came about. I was like, oh, what, like, what do I have to say? You know, what do, people don't care about what I'm posting. I care about it. And so I'll share it on my stuff. Um, and then it was just like the, the whole format of the photo. I had the idea in, the, in my head of, oh, okay, maybe I could create some sort of log for myself. You know, it was more, I was already writing down the recipes. I was taking photos just so that I had some sort of recollection myself. And then, um, you know, it was like using the Instagram page as kind of my own personal recipe book of something, you know, whether it was something that I created and just made up or I got this recipe from this food blogger or this cookbook so that I could remember the next time I wanted to go and make that chili. It's like, that's where I got it from. That's the recipe I followed. And, you know, that's now when Matt says, I want that chili. It's like, that's the one that he wants, not this other random, like little bit of this, little bit of that chili. So that's kind of how it started. So before, I was just taking the camera, wrapping it around my neck and using the strap as like, okay, I need to be this far away. So I would kind of line myself up and that's how I got it to some level of consistency of like, okay, if the strap is pulled tight and my arms are fully extended and it's right over the stool, then that's about, should be about the same every time. It was not the same every time, turns out. We've got some shrimp in the oven and we're gonna be making tacos with a tomatillo jalapeno salsa, some slaw, and it's either tacos or a bowl. I might do like a cauliflower rice bowl. Just depends on what we're all feeling today. Food photography is beautiful when it's all curated and there's napkins and there's edible flowers next to the food and you know, like it's, it's really, really pretty. Um, but for me, it doesn't necessarily seem accessible. Whereas this, I feel like, is accessible. Anybody can look at it and be like, oh, it's shrimp and a couple peppers, and like, I could do that. You know, if she makes it look so simple, maybe maybe I can make that for my family. And so that's kind of like, I, I liked how that the pictures themselves just simplified things. Like it didn't, it wasn't dressed up. It's not, there's no, you know, like napkins and silverware and all these things kind of cluttering the food. It's just, the food as it's getting prepared, and then the food on our plates. You know, working with the D, and she's given me guides. I, I travel a ton, so a lot of it is just learning how to eat when I'm on the road. Because when I'm home, um, you know, I'm in full control of it, and I, I didn't have to, um, when I started working with Idi, I didn't have to change my diet. I didn't have to take foods out or, you know, add foods in. I was already eating really well. I love vegetables. I love simple foods, um, you know, that are flavored with spices. And it was really easy to just follow a protocol. Um, but for Matt, it's mostly just like, he just needs calories. He probably doesn't need enough. He just needs to eat more. Um, because he's training, you know, eight hours a, a day and recovering in the off, you know, in the off times. And so, you know, I think it's just, like I said, we have different goals. So for me, I needed a little bit more guidance on ensuring what I'm doing at home, you know, is working. And so that way it's also giving me tools. So that way when I'm on the road, I know how to make better decisions when I'm, you know, only at a diner, but in the mornings I eat essentially a salad with eggs. Like I mix greens and roasted vegetables and, and then I put an egg on top and that's what I call breakfast, but you can't really get that at a diner when you're on the road. It's toast, home fries, and scrambled eggs are kind of your options. So it's learning how to 
travel and be prepared with my own stuff, but then also, um, you know, follow some of the guidelines that I've learned along the way. Adi and I were f friends and just were having conversation and she was like, huh, I'm, she's so insightful, you know? And she's like, I'm hearing you talk about these things and if you ever want to get in our system and have a space to talk about them, here's that space. And that's what's cool. It's like, it's just a, it's just a, it's an avenue. It's a space where you can go and talk to somebody about just how your week was. I mean, it's crazy that a lot of the check-ins are just, how was your week? Tell me about it. What was great? What was good? What was, what was not so great? And then, you know, I think I started my last check-in with, I feel like this is the first time I have nothing to report. And then it was five paragraphs and I went back to the top of it. And you know, you always like, maybe, maybe you do this, maybe you don't, but always pre fruit pre proofread words are hard proofread and so I went back to just make sure that there weren't any grammatical errors and I'm like oh my gosh that's a funny first sentence to start with of like I've got nothing to say this week and then five paragraphs later I had something to say apparently none of it on food just like checking in on how things are going and how I'm feeling like that's the craziest thing is that you don't realize how connected food is to everything and how it makes you feel on the inside outside and how it affects your confidence and how it affects your you know like just attitude towards the day and food's great we definitely focus on high nutritious foods um versus processed and packaged and um you know i try to make as much as I can homemade. You know, for instance, like I probably could have found a mix of shrimp that was seasoned already and cooked in some sort of sauce and, you know, a jarred can of salsa, not that we don't use jarred cans of salsa, but um, it's like, if I can make it, I'm, I want to try to. Sorry. Look at this, I'm coming your way. Where is, oh, here it is. Just blocking the steam. It was coming straight, <laughs> straight at the camera. So, figured rather than get it all fogged up. You know, if you're trying to live a healthy lifestyle, then sweets aren't necessarily your your best friend. And so it was like, okay, well, I still want a cookie, but I'm gonna try to make a cookie that fits what I'm doing. So whether that be gluten-free or refined sugar-free or whatever it was. And, you know, the truth with substitute baking is unless you've got it really dialed in, um, it's not necessarily delicious. And so it then leaves you wanting still that delicious treat that you, once again, food is memory. So if I want a cookie, I'm thinking about that chocolate chip cookie or that um, Diablo cookie, it's my favorite. It's like a Mexican chocolate, it's like spicy chocolate cookie. It's so good. But if I'm gonna have that, um, you know, I decided in kind of the, how we live here is like, I'm gonna have that cookie. I'm not gonna try to make a substitute for it. I'm just going to allow myself to have that cookie and, you know, make healthy choices around that if that's something that I wanna treat myself to. You know, we just kind of live in moderation. So nutrition is definitely important and something that we, um, you know, focus on. And that's, that's the goal is to be um, conscious of the stuff that we're putting in our bodies, but also allow ourselves to, if we're gonna have something, we're gonna have that. And then we're gonna make, you know, conscious decisions throughout the rest of the day or, you know, for our, our other meals throughout the week. Um, so nutrition has always been the focus. I think it also just kind of adjusted from being, okay, how can I sneak in a treat to how can I just live a really healthy life and then allow myself a treat every once in a while? I think for you, it, there wasn't really a plan of anything coming of it, right? Like it was no. just, she realized her personal Instagram page was turning into all food. And so she made a separate page for it. You know, I've, I've seen some of the cool stuff that's come of it. 
in terms of like Traeger Grills had Sammy out to FitCon and like they used her recipes for the influencer dinner. So, I mean, that was like 120, 150 people. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just that, like I was there to like with some other CrossFitters to take pictures and Sammy's there for a whole different reason. Like she's not just a plus one. Um, so, you know, it was a really cool experience of like, she has her gig. She, I have my gig and, um, I mean, whatever she wants to build it into, I mean, it can stay as fun for as possible or like if it turns into something awesome, we'll run with that too. You know, um, kind of look at it as like the equivalent of like my CrossFit career of, I didn't plan on any of this stuff being built into what it is now. Um, so, I mean, who knows? We may keep taking photos on a little stool or at some point, you know, when we build our new house in Vermont, there may be like a studio kitchen, you know, who knows what it'll be built into, but regardless of what it is, it'll make for a good story. <laughs> it's basically like a at home, like Denny's menu of like, like you go in Denny's, you don't even need to read anything. You just point to a picture. And so like, I'll go through Sammy's, the feeding the freezers, Instagram page. And I'm like, Oh, like, you know, just something that we haven't had in a while. So you forget it exists or that's even an option. I'm like, yo, do we have the stuff to make this? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, give me 20 minutes. And then she'll whip it up and she's able to pull up the recipe on her page. And so she knows what she needs and she can tell me if we have it or not. Mm-hmm. I think a big thing to realize is that everything that is on that page gets eaten. Yeah. Um, when, when was it? Was it last year before regionals or before the games? Like I had to be like, stop making cheesecakes stop making like these desserts because like Mm. I'm going to eat them you know so once again depending on the season depends on the recipes getting made but yeah she was like she got into like this niche of like just making more desserts like she made a cheesecake and it was a huge hit at whatever gathering we had and so I was like I'm going to experiment with this type of cheesecake or this one I'm like you have to stop (laughs) it's in the house I'm going to eat it like I have to compete in like a month. Like I can't be going out there like two ten. Food does not go away. <laughs> These are the tough moments when she's like making a dish. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here like drooling, and she's like, "Give me one minute." So also the photos are literally my plates of food that I'm waiting on. (laughs) Yeah, you guys are catching it. This mango is like the most perfect mango. Yeah, it's really good. Ever. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You want your man to be eating shirtless? Make it a spicy meal. (laughs) How the turntables have turned. How the (laughs) turntables, I was just gonna say that. How the turntables have turned. I explore. Yeah. That's why you got me. It's perfect. Yeah, I saw more of my home state in the first year that Sam and I dated Mm -hmm. than I did in my first like 24 years of living there. (laughs) This is a rare sighting of Matt making his own plate. Remember that one time you stirred my blueberry jam (laughs) in the kitchen? (laughs) It's purely because there's a camera here and I feel awkward being like, Sammy, another plate. I manage uh, CrossFit athletes and everything from, um, you know, contract negotiations for partnerships and sponsors to, you know, helping them execute on what those contract obligations are. So everything from photo shoots to social media um, to brand marketing activations with their various brands. 
Um, so I, I work very closely with the athletes, but then I also work closely with their brands, making sure that the brand is getting what they, um, you know, are asking of the athlete and vice versa. Thanks. That was easy. We'll catch up again on Thursday then. All right. Bye. just about the biggest thing that I've learned is just lowering the expectation. I can't make home on a travel trip. I can do my best to replicate it, but it's also, it's not home. So, okay, maybe I have salt, pepper, and oil. It's a good start. I can make something delicious, you know, season up some vegetables or a steak with just that, but you just, you make it work. So it's the same thing. Um, being on the road now, it's like I have a small little toolkit of things that I, I do and I apply. And a lot of it is just lowering the expectation and understanding that I'll be home in a couple of days. And if I can leave a trip and get home and feel good about the efforts that I put into getting some sort of movement in to, you know, even if I'm not tracking every gram of something, I'm at least making a conscious effort to, you know, get grilled chicken, get, um, you know, be specific about how I want my vegetables cooked or um, get dressing on the side because who knows what type of mix it is and just little things like that. Those are little things for me that make ordering out at a, at a restaurant or traveling on the road just a little bit easier. Yeah, you don't realize um, how much goes into it until you have a post in front of you. You're like, oh my gosh, what do I even say? I'm just providing you a, a snapshot into our daily life. I'm not an authority on anything. I'm just sharing a passion of mine and hoping that it, you know, inspires other people to be passionate about something or to, you know, find passion in cooking and find passion in bringing people together through food. Um, but I'm not necessarily an authority when it comes to, you know, what you should and shouldn't be eating. That's, that's, that's for you to decide and for you to figure out what works best for you. Um, so what I'm showing is just, um, you know, what we happen to be eating at a, at a given time. There's, there's no particular, um, I think reason why I'm posting something on a specific day or during a specific time. It's just, that's what I happened to cook this week. So here you go. Some chili for me? Oh my <laughs> God. Wait a minute. Did you see this on Alex Anderson's yeah. post? Yeah. Things going no looking bad like a bat with an eye patch. All black through the woods with a backpack and a lit match. Spark one time, get the whole city looking like a dark set of orange when I burn it down. What it is, what it do, whole click getting live on the talk of the town. Let me city had a mouth and it wouldn't shut up. On a hunt for a crown when they get it, I'ma burn it cause nobody in the game right now even deserve it. Damn, like I don't want no time to kill, I've been feeling like the opposite of work. It's a work and it never been a purpose thing to me. I just do what I love and it works for me. So I'm freaking every check and put the money in the pushing. Maybe we gonna take the finish and the kidding of a dope in the sea, I do it differently, so only time will give me everything that I deserve, my Yeah. yeah film crews are fun when I'm not the one getting filmed. Yeah, this is on. way cooler. I was like, get up. My legs just don't want to work, though. I love that that's what you thought. That's exactly what I thought. I look like a little bitch. Yeah. Get up! Get up! The new high for me. Like lifetime high. Just being videotaped watching The Office. <clears throat> yeah, so I had done some level of tracking uh, before. I think it just makes you more aware. I don't necessarily think it's changed 
anything that I cook. I mean, you know, like tonight's a perfect example. I'm having one meal, one, because it's leftovers and just, you know, leftovers are just as good. Two, because it's easy, because it's leftovers. And three, like this is some, this is pretty typical of what I'll eat on a regular basis of just like super simple. I've got a little bit of cooked vegetables, a little bit of like a heavier starch, you know, something that just will fill me up some meat and then, you know, just some, some greens. Whereas, you know, I've got a, a lovely steak and rice and, and vegetables for Matt. So it's still very simple, but, um, you know, I don't need a 12 ounce steak. Um, if I were to make one of those for myself, I would portion it out appropriately and probably wouldn't sear it in butter and, you know, make it all extra yummy. I would just make it yummy. You know, that makes sense. I just put the sauce that I made in it with some lime juice and then cilantro. What sauce is that? The green sauce that was in the blender mm. this afternoon. The salsa? Mm hmm You know, we don't necessarily like prescribe to a certain thing, but there's definitely waves throughout the year of, <clears throat> okay, when he is getting closer to competition and when he's training a ton, we're not so concerned about, you know, excuse me, cookies or brownies and things like that in terms of like the calories are, are just going to, going to burn. But at the same time, it's just being a little bit more aware that, you know, if you're being called upon to perform that you want to feel your best. And if you've got a little extra fluff, you might not feel your best and you might not feel as though you can perform at your best. And so it's just kind of like, we just clean it up a little bit. If my gymnastics is good when I weigh 205, then I'll weigh 205. But right now my gymnastics feels the best when I'm at low 190s. So then that's what I do. But I, I don't care how I look or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's purely just function. Yeah. If so you're feeling good while yeah. eating the way that you're eating, then that's how you keep eating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I usually try to float around like low 190s. <clears throat> on the other side, I care about what I look like and how I feel. And, <clears throat> you know, that's like my fitness for fun. And I remember this was like a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I came home from the gym and I was like, I feel fit again. Like, you know, when you get into when you're like coming off of an off season or whatever. And you're like, oh, it just doesn't feel good working out whether it's because you're out of shape or whether it's because you're holding on to a couple extra pounds or, or because you were training for something super specific. Like a friend of ours is, excuse me, running a marathon. So she's only been running. She hasn't done CrossFit in months. And so like if she were to go and do a CrossFit workout, she would have that same feeling of like, oh my gosh, I just feel so unfit for this. And the best feeling in the world is coming, like doing a workout like I did today. It was so gross, but the coolest part about it is that I could do it. It didn't feel great, but I hit my splits every time. Like I increased my pace and it got harder, but it's like, that's the whole point of like, if it's getting easier, then you're not progressing, right? Like it just, it continues to get harder as you get better. And that's a good feeling, that should excite people.